Hey everybody, if you saw um, the start date for this at 310, it's because I screwed up and didn't um, didn't set this up till the last minute. So we are going to more or less start at three. Um, but uh, if you again, if you see 310, hopefully you came, you came in early. If not, you come in at 310, you're going to miss a little bit of the intro. So um, let's see who's here. I don't see any. I don't see anybody popping up yet. Let's see what let's see what states and countries we got here today for the tying session. We're going to tie a we're going to tie a saltwater fly. Um, it's a bait fish imitation, but it can be used in freshwater, and um, I've used it in freshwater. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. I'm going to wait for a couple minutes until people people come in. So there's Alyssa from North Carolina and Ed from Florida, Roger Bird from Texas, James from New Brunswick, Canada, Rob from the UK, Robert from Bay of Fundy, Craig from Parsippany, New Jersey. Wow. And um, um, Julia's here. Julia just popped in. I saw her pop in, but uh, just so just in case you're worried, Phil's here. Phil's here in the background and Julia's in the background and they're going to be popping up uh, references to to stuff that you ask about mexico city we got new brunswick north carolina wow wow new zealand we got we got a worldwide audience here i don't know why you're all here i don't know why you're all here watching me but you must be you must have nothing better to do today other than watch some monkey tie flies so um anyway I will, I will do my best. Um, the fly we're going to tie today is Bob Popovic's surf candy. And Bob is, um, Bob is from New Jersey. He actually, actually, uh, owns a restaurant in New Jersey and he is one of, he's a, he's a larger than life character. He's physically larger than life. And, um, and he's, uh, as, as a person, he's larger than life. He's, he's very modest, kind of soft-spoken for a big guy. And, and one of the nicest people, if you ever go to the, the sport shows, um, particularly the one in New Jersey, the fly fishing show in New Jersey, Bob's always there. And, um, and he's just a wonderful human being. And um, I uh, tried to get him to come on today and and give me grief while I was tying, but couldn't get hold of him. Trying to do a podcast with him too. I know a number of you have asked um, if uh, I could do a podca podcast with uh, Bob Popovics, and I just saw that he's trying to call me on my phone. <laughs> so hope, hopefully, hopefully he'll come in on, on Facebook. I just I just uh, had to decline a call from Bob. Because I don't know how that would work. Anyway, um, anyways, Bob is a, is a wonderful guy. He's he's developed um, a number of innovative saltwater flies, and my very favorite is the Surf Candy. And it's a it's quite a simple fly. It's really fun to tie, and you can get kind of creative with them. But it's a uh, here. I'll show you what the what it looks like. So it looks like that, and it's long and skinny. You can't see the the rear end of the fly. Um, but it's um, it's mainly just a little ultra hair and and tinsel and epoxy, and um, it's an interesting fly because um, you know we we always talk about the action of a fly, you know, the way it wiggles and waves in the water, and this fly has virtually no action. Um, it's really stiff, and um, interestingly enough, it's very very effective, and I think that. I think that um, you don't always want a wiggly fly for a bait fish imitation because if you watch bait fish swim through the water, they are not very wiggly. They just kind of vibrate their bodies, but they don't they don't wiggle like a clouser minnow or or like a marabou uh, streamer. Um, they're they're fairly stiff and straight, and particularly when they're injured or when they're dead, uh, they're they're quite stiff. So um, this fly works well. Um, retrieved and it also works well just letting it kind of fall down through the water column. Um, 
it's um, it's my favorite fly for the tuna species. Um, any, everything from I've caught um, bluefin tuna, skipjack, yellowfin, uh, false albacore, bonito, um, Spanish mackerel, cerro mackerel on this fly because um, the the tunas seem to like uh, skinny bait fish like sand eels and and bay anchovies and silversides, and this fly imitates those uh, skinnier bait fish very well. And one of the mistakes I think people made were, were kind of getting toward the end of false albacore season. Some of you still have some is to, you know, the, the fish are moving very fast. And one of the mistakes people make, I think, uh, is not to experiment with a very slow retrieve. Um, you know, you, you see these things exploding in the water and you rip, yip, rip your fly through them. I've had a lot better luck. Uh, with a slow retrieve so that it looks like a, a bait fish that um, has been crippled and and can't really get away or even letting the things tumble down in the water column so anyways the surf candy is a great fly uh, i've caught smallmouth bass on it i've caught large mouse on it i've caught tarpon on it um i caught a permit on a uh, a surf candy once believe it or not it's not exactly a a, a fly you would expect to catch a permit on uh, but it, it's one of my go-to flies in salt water. And um, I'm sure it would work on trout. I, I don't think I've ever caught a trout on a surf candy, um, but you could tie one to imitate, uh, you know, a um, small fall fish or a black nose dace or something. And, and I think it would, I think it would work quite well. So anyway, that's the fly. Um, it's a bait fish, so you can really use it for anything that'll eat bait fish. I'm, sh um, I'm sure it'll catch redfish and sea trout and snook. Don't know if I've caught those species on it, but again, it's one of the flies that I that I go to, particularly when the fish are being difficult because it's such a realistic, um, subtle looking fly. Now, well, anyway, that's that's the intro. Uh, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions so far? Alexander is excited for this tie. Well, so am I, Alexander. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I love tying these. They're a lot of fun. Um, and the cool thing is that it's kind of like sheet rocking in that when you apply the epoxy to the fly, you apply it in thin coats. And if you don't quite get it right, you hit it with the light, let it dry, and then put another coat on top to smooth it out. So um, it's a lot like I well, like uh, sheet rocking a joint because um, if you make a mistake, you can you can fix it. Um, anyway, uh, just wondering, will it work in fresh waters? Yes, it will. It's a bait fish. It will eat, it will work. Um, I haven't used it as much in fresh water, but um, it it I'm sure it'll work in fresh water. Any bait fish will work. And yes, Robert, I, I bet it would be really good for the striped bass in the St. John River. Anything that eats a bait fish, again, and if, particularly if they are on skinny bait fish. Now, you can tie this fly wider. You can make it, you can make it wider by putting more hair on it and, and more epoxy, um, but it, I think it's most effective for a small um, bait fish like bay anchovy, um, sand eels, silver sides, things like that. All right, shall we start? Let's start. So here's my materials. I'm going to start, and I just I think just a standard shank uh, saltwater hook is uh, is the best. Just that this is a standard pre-sharpened saltwater hook, standard shank. You could tie it on a long shank hook, but you know you worry a bit about um, worry a bit about long shank hooks and their hooking hooking. Uh, qualities. And then uh, this is important. I think you can tie this with, with any thread, but I like tying it with monofilament because when you hit this with the epoxy, the, the thread disappears. It becomes totally transparent. So let's put it, let's put a hook in a vise. Get this guy out of the way. And I'm going to just readjust my angle here a bit. So bear with me. Bear with me. All right. Okay. 
So I'm going to start my, uh, this is G size monofilament thread. And I'm going to start it up near, right near the eye. And just starting, starting my thread, starting my mono. And I forgot my scissors. I need my scissors. There they are. Cut this off. And then come back to eh, pretty close to the eye. Right about there. And then you're going to take uh, some white ultra hair. Now you can tie this with other hairs, but you want something you want something with not too much kink in it. Okay, um, ultra hair has a little bit of a kink in it. Uh, some of it this piece of olive that I'm going to use for some reason has less of a kink in it. Um, but you want something translucent. Um, Bob originally, Bob originally tied this fly with polar bear hair, but of course polar bear hair is illegal to sell and uh, not many people have it, but it's very translucent. Um, ultra hair works really well. Um, you can use uh, like, you can use EP fiber if you want. Uh, it doesn't look as good. Uh, some nylon, ultra hair is nylon. I think this nylon stuff works the best. Oh, by the way, um, I forgot to tell you how Bob, how Bob uh, developed this fly um, back in the, I think it was 1970s. Um, striped bass were uh, not very abundant where he lived. He lives in New Jersey. And they were catching a lot of big bluefish, as a lot of us were back in those days. And um, he was trying to come up with a fly that would be super durable because bluefish just tear up a fly. You know, you, you usually after one, after one fish, your fly is ruined. And he was making some poppers and he had, uh, he had some epoxy on his fly tying table and he started messing around with putting epoxy on um, body of a bait fish imitation instead of using it to coat a popper. And that's how he eventually refined uh, the surf candy. So we're going to take, we're going to take a, a bunch of uh, ultra hair, not too much. I would say, you know, about half a hook gap. A half a hook gap or so. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Uh, VM is asking if white turkey feathers would work. No, not really. I don't think so. Turkey feathers? Mm, you could try them. I don't, I don't think they'd work very well. Buck, you could use bucktail. But I don't know about turkey feathers. All right, so I'm going to bring this over to the vise, and I'm going to measure. I'm, I'm beyond where you can see, but I'm going to measure this about at least twice the, the shank length. Actually, I'm going to tie it down first. You can tie it down first. So, oh, what I did was I squared off the ends of that ultra hair. And I'm going to tie it down with three or four loose turns, not too tight. And then what I'm going to do is cut it off to about twice the shank length. I'll show you the finish fly one in a second, or I'll show you the length in a second. I'm going to cut it about twice the length. Let me give you, the, give you a kind of a pan of that so you can see it. So pretty long. And then this, since this is going to be the belly of the fly, the easy way to do this, because I just tied that ultra hair on there with, with uh, light tension, is I'm going to just roll the ultra hair underneath the shank. So rather than turning the hook upside down, you don't need to do it with this. Um, you can just you can just roll it and look at it from the far side. Make sure it's evenly distributed under the hook. 
crank down on that to lock it in place. Now I'm putting more pressure on it. And then I like to take the hook out of the vise and just uh, distribute the hair on both sides, on both sides of that. So you just take it out of the vise and, and move it around so that the hair is now distributed all around the bottom of the shank. Okay, so that's the belly. Next, I'm gonna take some flashaboo. You can use crystal flash or whatever your little heart desires. Something flashy. I like flashaboo in this fly. Crystal flash will work, any flashy material. And just pick about, I don't know, six to eight strands of that. Not too much. Maybe 10 if you want it to be extra flashy. Cut it off. Wet it. Square them off with your scissors. And then just take those strands of flashaboo and lash them to the top of the hook shank. Like so. And then uh, I'm gonna come back and just cut those even with my white. I can find them all. They all got all over the place here. There, I got them all. And I'm gonna. I'm just gonna cut them even with the end of my, the end of my uh, wing. All right. Now for the top piece, and I'm tying a sand eel imitation here. Sand lance is the proper term for it. It's not an eel. It's a small bait fish. And I'm going to use olive because their backs are kind of a greenish olive. If you're tying this to imitate uh, a bay anchovy, you might use uh, tan. Or if you if the bait fish have a dark back, you could use dark brown or black or you know whatever whatever color bait fish imitation you want to get. Um, and I'm going to take about the same amount of the olive. And I'm going to square off the ends. Oh, I didn't show you that part. Sorry. And then I'm going to tie that right on top of the white. And try to keep it on top of the hook. And a little, little slippage there. You don't have to be too neat here because all these turns are going to disappear. And then I'll cut that off even with my white. Here, I'll show you. Turn it so you can see it. And then I'm just going to cut that even with my white. We're going to taper that later. So don't have to worry too much about it at this point. Now I'm going to come back and whip finish. And I might, I might even out that head a little bit. And you don't have to worry about crowding the eye. You can get right up on the eye with this fly. Because you're not going to be having any other materials. So, you know, kind of even up your head so it looks nice. And then whip finish with your monofilament. Three or four turns. You're going to put epoxy all over this so you don't have to have a real strong whip finish. Pull on it. And now we're ready for our epoxy. So the tying part's done. Now the fun part begins. Uh, you want to inspect this and make sure that your hair is nicely distributed with the white on the bottom and around the, around the sides of the shank and then the green on the top. It looks pretty good. And now we're going to add some epoxy. So 
Um, we, have a, uh, we have a good question from Evan. Yeah. Are the tail ends tapered or squared off? They're like squared off right now. I'm going to taper them at the end. Okay, great. You can taper them beforehand, but I find it easier to taper them at the end. So you can do it awesome. either way. But yeah, they could be tapered at this point. So I'm going to use, I'm going to be using a thin uh, epoxy. I've found that thin works better than thick or flow. So the thin epoxy is, is the one I think is the easiest to work with here. And I like to use the brush. You know, these things, these things come with, um, they come with nozzles that you can also use. They come with nozzles that you can put in the top so you can, um, you drop put droplets on it but i find that the brush works the best for this but you can do it either way i've done it both ways and it's not a problem either way just find the brush i can control it a little bit better with the brush the other way to do it is to put drops on it and move it around with your uh, your bodkin or dubbing needle okay so you want to start with your epoxy at, and make sure that you uh, don't have too much epoxy dripping from your brush. And I, you like, you want to start at the back, and you want to kind of hold that in place and start right beyond the bend. And you know, I've got some on there. And you want to work forward. You want to hold that in place while you're doing it, and just work it into there. And uh, turn your fly, turn your fly over and just beyond the bend. The reason you want to go just beyond the bend is probably pretty obvious that, uh, it prevents that hair from fouling around the hook and just make sure you got it. Make sure you got a surface coat on all parts of the fly. Don't worry too much about it. You want to you want it fairly even here, but don't worry too much about it because you're going to put a couple, probably a couple more coats on there. So that looks pretty good. It's all covered. It's got a nice shape. And now you're going to hit it with the light for the first coat. And if you want a really skinny one, then you want to kind of grab that hair and squeeze it and kind of compress it a little bit. So since this is going to be a sand eel, I want it to be pretty skinny. So I'm going to pull on it to compress it. And then I'm going to hit it first on the near side while holding it. Now I can let go because it's all set. And now I can do the, the rest of it. And hold that a uh, couple tricks for using these lights. You want to hold them real close and you want to keep it on there for a while. You want to make sure you get all angles. And you also want to make sure that you have fresh batteries in your, in your light before you do this. It's not so big of a deal when you're putting a wing case on a nymph with this stuff, but when you're doing a whole body, you want that light to be, you want that light to be nice and bright. So there's a start. Now it's nice and stiff. It's hard. It's a little, little greasy feeling, which is common with these epoxies. Oh, one of the, one of the keys to, to curing this epoxy, because most of the epoxies, they'll say that they're, they're tack free. None of them are totally tack free. They all feel a little tacky after you use them. And I have found that um, the best way to do this is to stick these in a styrofoam block or something and let them sit out in the sun for a few hours. Uh, that will really cure that epoxy. It'll cure it all the way inside uh, the fly and it will remove that tacky stuff. So, um, Just a little trick to, to getting that 
the, some people some people will actually put a, a layer of Sally Hansen's on uh, on the over the top of it, but I, I don't like doing that. I don't, it makes them smell, it makes them stink. And this epoxy doesn't smell much. Now I'm going to take a uh, post-it note, and I'm just going to take a drop of super glue and get it open. And I'm going to put a drop of super glue on this post-it note so that I can just pick up a little bit with my dubbing needle. Or whatever you use to apply super glue. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this on my dubbing needle. And then I'm going to come over to the fly, turn it sideways and figure out where you want your eyes to be. I like them just behind the head and put a little bit of super glue in there. Super glue plays pretty well with, with uh, epoxy. All right in there. Then I'm gonna turn over and do the other side with a little super glue. It's not gonna dry right away, so you don't have to be in a big hurry here. This is just just to keep the eyes from rolling when you apply the next layer of. Okay. Wipe your dubbing needle off in the post-it or whatever so you don't glue it to your fingers. And then pick up, pick up an eye. And I like small eyes on these. I like either three or four millimeter uh, eyes. And you're going to pick up one of these eyes and stick it on the end of your dubbing needle. They have a little sticky, they have a little sticky stuff on them. And then use the dubbing needle to carefully transfer the eyes to the fly. Move them around a little bit, get them where you want them. And then do the eye on the other side. Pick up another one. Did I switch cameras there? I can't remember if I switch cameras, but I'll switch on this one. So there I've got my... We can see you adding the eyes right now. Okay. Here you go. And then I'm going to put an eye on the other side. Move it around a little bit. It's tricky. It's a little fussy. Make sure they're lined up. I want this one to go forward a little bit. Ah, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks all right. So anyway, little, small eye. And then you can take your red, uh, red marker. I don't know how well I can do this reaching in by the camera. So I'm just going to take a red marker and make a little gill slash. A little ways back, about three quarters of the way down, all the way around. And this gill slash, when you put epoxy over it, will bleed a little bit. So don't make it too big. Not necessarily a bad thing that it bleeds a little bit. So now you got your little little gill slash in there. And now you're going to put on your second coat of epoxy. Back to my back to my brush. And now you're gonna coat the whole thing. And this is where you get and be careful when you go over those eyes that you don't knock them out of place. Because the super glue doesn't hold them that super well. You could probably use head cement to do that with the eyes. You could probably even use a little bit of wax or something because you're going to cover them up with epoxy. So they're not going to, they're not going to go anywhere. And just carefully paint that. Cover it. Make sure everything is covered so it looks nice and pretty. These are so much fun. They look so cool too when you're done. All right. 
and you can rotate this a little bit although that stuff doesn't doesn't tend to run very much and hit it again with your light rotate the fly in the vise and tom we have a couple epoxy questions yeah Steven's asking, does all epoxy cure with an ultraviolet light? No. And that's a really good question. Yep. I thought so too. That, that's a really good question. Uh, most people today use um, UV cure epoxy because it's a lot easier to work with. Now, in the old days, um, before UV cure epoxy, uh, in fact, when, when Bob... When Bob first started tying these, we didn't have UV cure epoxy. It wasn't available. Uh, I think dentists had it, but but we didn't have it in fly tying. So we would use standard. You can use standard um, five minute, thirty minute, or sixty minute epoxy. Um, the problem is that it will run and drip and droop. So what you'd have to do, and what Bob originally did, which was be really time consuming is he used five minute epoxy and he would sit there and carefully rotate the vise as the fly dried so that the epoxy wouldn't run in any particular direction and he'd wait till that five minute epoxy cured and you know that's that's too much for me um too much time sitting in front of a, looking at a fly spinning around in a vise um the other way to do it is to use uh 30 minute epoxy and, uh, you know, any clear 30 minute epoxy and, uh, you get a, a fly turner. Now I think I may have one here. Let me see if I have one really close at hand. I don't have one. Uh, we, I think we sell one at Orvis, uh, but it's a, it's a, a, a slow rotating motor with a foam block on it. And if you use 30 minute or even 60 minute epoxy, you stick your flies in that rotating piece of foam and they rotate around very slowly and as the epoxy dries it doesn't run because it's you know all four sides are are being subjected to gravity as it makes one revolution so yeah you can use you certainly don't have to use uv epoxy um, it's just a lot easier and quicker um, but you know sometimes i think that the ones made with uh 30 and 30 minute epoxy are uh, even harder and more clear and they don't ha tend to have that tacky feeling, um, that kind of sticky feeling after you finish with them. Although again, as I said, um, you can, you can put them outside and, uh, the sun, the UV from sunlight, even on a cloudy day, will remove a lot of that tackiness. Um, Okay, and then the other epoxy question was from Joe. Oh, Bob, Bob is, Bob Popovics is there on YouTube. There is. Blue light, tough fly. Yeah, but Bob, tough fly isn't being sold anymore, right? You can't buy tough fly anymore. I don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, I don't believe that, I don't believe that tough fly is available anymore. Um most of the most of the epoxies that you're going to find today, the uh, Loon and the um, Solar Res, are cured with with ultraviolet light. Anyway, um, I'm going to put one more coat. Just just sometimes just just to really really polish this thing off and make it smooth. I'm gonna I'm gonna put one more coat on here. So let's. Uh, uh, size monofilament, Joe is G size G monofilament tying thread so i'm gonna put one more coat on there just to smooth it out the eyes are sticking out a little bit so i'm going to concentrate a little bit more up there this is where you definitely want a rotary vise otherwise you can pick this up in your hand and do it but rotary vice is a lot a lot nicer Let's see if i can do this without screwing it up how am i doing bob bob's watching oh. how does that look 
and you can you know you can kind of move things around like that to get it just where you want it and then hit it with your light And you're pretty much done. Now I'm going to back up and uh, taper this. So I'm going to get a little further from the fly. If I can get the whole tail in there. I don't have, I don't have a zoom. I don't have a zoom lens, a zoom macro lens like Flagler does. That Flagler, that bad boy. And, uh, so to taper this, and you could do this, you can take it out of the vise if you want, but easier for me to show you here. You want to start, start right beyond the tail and take a couple snips, kind of snip, 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 snip. And then you want to pull those out so you're not recutting them. And then you come down a little further and you snip, 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 snip. And then pull those out. You come down a little further and you snip, 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 snip. And you want to kind of get them on the side too. So you snip there, snip there, snip there. And you just keep working at this. And then you do the belly in the same way. Again, it's easier to do it when the And then you can come in with your scissors if you want and kind of even it out. I can say I don't have enough of a taper there, so I'm gonna kind of like what a barber would do, I guess. And now you've got you've got your little taper to the tail, and I want a little more taper there, so I'm gonna take a few more off here. And there you've got, there you've got a uh, surf candy. Cool fly, very effective. Without a lot of wiggly action. The tail does, the tail does flutter just a bit, but it's certainly not like a, like most flies, like a clouser minnow or something. And of course, as with, as with all of these things, you can keep, tapering and keep monkeying with it until you're done until you cut all the hair off by mistake and i'll probably futz with this later to taper it and anyway that is the surf candy how'd i do bobby the only bad spot on your candy is you pulled the top color down a bit at the hook bend Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, Bob? You gotta be kidding me. I pulled the top color down a bit at the hook bend. Oh man, it doesn't, work. are you sure? Wow. I don't know. I'd be happy with that one. <laughs> I see it, Bob. <laughs> I see it, but uh, um, God, that's getting fussy. I see it. Yeah, I see it. Okay, I see it. Um, anyway, um, Bob, anything anything else that I screwed up on this? <laughs> It's like, come on, it's like, it's like half a millimeter below the hook. I can't, I can't believe you. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, one of the things that, that Bob um, has done in the past, and I, I didn't do it here, it's really fancy, is to take a really thin um, mylar tubing 
and glue a, a, a feather, a, a V-shaped feather at the end of it, put a piece of monofilament down through the middle of it, and then tie it to the end so you have a long extended body of Mylar tinsel. It's pretty cool looking. Um, call that a full dress surf candy. But uh, anyway, I keep looking at that fly. I keep looking at that. Jeez. Wow. It'll catch fish. I'm happy with it. It'll catch fish. All right. Any other questions? Uh, that, that was pretty quick today. Any other, any other questions that I can answer about, um, about the surf candy? Thread the entire shank will increase strength. Okay. I'll do that next time. Yeah, fly foils too, Bob. Yep. Fly, fo fly foils, for those of you who um, aren't familiar with them, are these little, um, they're these little mylar um, side strips that you can, you can put on the sides of the fly to give it uh, uh, a shiny bait fish look. Those are pretty cool too. But they're not, they're hard to, they're hard to find. So um, I didn't, um, I didn't put the fly foils on there. Good for stripers in the surf. Yes, G. Wyatt, that's what this was developed for, stripers and bluefish. So yes, it's very good for stripers in the surf. Donovan, you can use this anywhere fish eat skinny bait fish. Try it on, uh, try it on trout. I, I, I don't know if anybody, anybody ever caught a trout on, I never fished it for trout, but I, I don't see, I don't see why it, um, it wouldn't work. And painting the belly silver. Uh, link to the UV epoxy and light, please. Phil, can you or Julia um, put the link to the epoxy on our site? If, if you didn't already, you probably did. So next time, next time, coat the whole shank with monofilament to increase strength. I will do that. Next time, I will not let my back extend below the hook shank. Jeez. <sighs> That's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> Light cured acrylic. Uh. What I don't, Bob, I don't know what light cured acrylic is. I'm not familiar with it. Is it's different than epoxy? Peacock bass, yeah, it might work for peacock bass. Again, anything that eats bait fish. Um, and Joe, yes, trout are pretty stupid. They'll eat anything. Um, I think I think you could uh, really uh, do a good job of imitating a black nose dace, uh, which is a very skinny trout stream minnow uh, with this pattern. Tie it in a smaller size, maybe an eight. You oh, by the way, sizes. Um, I like these in, I like these in twos, fours, and sixes. But you can tie them larger, and you can tie them smaller. You can tie them really tiny. I know that um, early in the spring, um, or not early in the spring, but in, in late May and early June on Martha's Vineyard, there used to be, and I'm sure there still is, a hatch of sand eels, which were teeny, teeny, tiny. They were less than an inch long, and I, I've tied these down down really really small to imitate those young um just hatch sand eels really really tiny flies that will sometimes sometimes work on striped bass early in the spring when the sand eels are really tiny they get bigger obviously as the summer goes on anything else no other questions okay well, um, that was a short one, but uh, we had a lot last week with Flagler went like what an hour and a half or something like that. So I'll give you a I'll give you a short one today. Um, next Monday, I believe I am tying Jesse uh, Jesse Haller uh, Euro nymph, right, Julia? Yeah, Julia is nodding. Yeah, I'm tying a a, a killer. Uh, a killer nymph from our very own Jesse Haller, who's going to join us on the tying session. And we're going to tie a, uh, a Euro nymph, uh, one that Jesse has found to be 
very effective. So um, if you're a, a nymph angler, this and you can use this. You don't have to be a Euro nympher. You can use this nymph uh, dry dropper or under an indicator or however you want. It, um, you don't have to just use it as a Euro nymph, but it's tied on a jig hook um, and it works quite well. So anyway, we'll be tying. We'll be tying that next week. A little bit simpler fly, a little bit smaller fly. And um, I just want to thank everybody for for tuning in today. I want to thank Bob Popovics for critiquing me and making me feel insecure <laughs> about, about that that stripe on the back. <laughs> Too late to fix it. The epoxy's set. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to tie some more, and I'm going to make sure <laughs> that they're tied right. Um, but. Um, thank you all. Uh, means a lot to us that you that you come out here on a Monday afternoon and and watch us tie. I hope some of you tied along with me, and um, go uh, go try out some surf candies and fish them. You're going to be um, pleasantly surprised at how well they work, and it's quite a different fly from what you're probably used to fishing. So, um, thanks everyone, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>